Nearly two decades ago, innovators at Linden Lab here in San Francisco imagined millions of people arriving in a virtual place. Its name? Second Life. The OG platform for digital immersion, it was a learning ground for all the positives and negatives the medium could spawn. But no sooner had the excitement of Second Life peaked, it collapsed under the weight of its own lofty expectations. It's just one point of light for those boldly going forward to claim a new manifest destiny of the future by launching into virtual space. Today, the online big bang of COVID-19 means that everything that could go online has gone online. But in our isolation of remote work and living, we're growing increasingly weary of the flat 2D experiences of fumbling with Zoom rooms and goofy online cocktail parties. We're now yearning to break free and launch into something far more profound, three-dimensional, truly immersive, and virtual. Broader explorations of the possibilities of VR tantalize us. Cool or sometimes ridiculous mixed reality phenomena like Pokemon Go and the latest Snapchat filters pop up everywhere and start to become a canvas for mind-blowing levels of personalization. But writing it off as just a game thing is done at your peril. Virtual space will remake experiences in important and, yes, fun ways. And due to fears about contagion, interest in virtual and augmented space as a place where the future of work happens is skyrocketing. Lots of leading companies from film, travel, healthcare, retail, automotive, education, and heavy equipment industries are getting real results. What are some of the specific benefits? Already, automotive engineers across continents collaborate on virtual models, walk through virtual factories, and see each other's virtual avatars. The imminent use of sensory haptic suits is not far behind. Teachers and museums give immersive tours of cities, stars, and planets. Conservation organizations showcase the environmental impact of deforestation. Quarterbacks get reps and train to be the next Aaron Rodgers. Hotels are improving the speed of cleaning guest rooms. Cosmetics companies help customers with millions of product try-ons. Dying retail mall spaces are transforming into safe space for immersion. Home designers redecorate rooms for prospective house buyers, vastly heightening the probability of a purchase. And phlebotomists see subcutaneously through skin and stop having to repeatedly poke grandma. Spaces and places are going to be important for the future of work, and with mixed reality, they're going to be critical. It may be coming soon to a town near you, just like here at Meow Wolf in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where they took an old dilapidated bowling alley and converted it into a state-of-the-art space for immersion. We are really passionate about trying to create blended spaces where uh, it's not a focus on the technology as much as it is a focus on the holistic experience. Some examples of that, our team has done pop-ups with Magic Leap and Microsoft and used the HoloLens and Magic Leap displays in addition to mobile AR to kind of uh, reframe some of, our, some of our portals and some of our narrative that goes through the house. So for instance, with Microsoft, we um, we created a narrative wrapper around their volumetric capture stage. And so we, we had people meeting their, their virtual selves and uh, meeting tiny miniature versions of themselves, which is the 3D volumetric video captures. So it's like having a little hologram of yourself. That's really cool. And so rather than saying, hey, we're, we're going to do a volumetric pop-up and, and you, get, you get a volumetric video of yourself, we were telling them, hey, do you want to come to the travel agency for, for holograms? The travel agency <laughs> for your virtual self? And finding ways to kind of uh, couch technology in these speculative and imaginative terms. Bringing people together in a physical space is, is one of the drawbacks of the HMD world. And as much as we love them, you know, we're all tech geeks at, at our core, is that it, it can become isolating. And I think that that will change over time. But currently, you, know, you put the headset on and you're in your own little world. Here, what we're doing is projecting on the physical world, you can have 10, 15, 20, even more people all in the same location experiencing the same thing at the exact same time. And it's interactive. Fantastic, and I, I kind of know that the, you know the next uh, chapter for you guys. It's already happening. You've taken a big box retailer and if you know, are repurposing the space. What you're getting at is kind of the other side of the business, outside of the the experiential immersive side, is the use of space in the community. And you know, our our largest supporters are in the real estate world, and they're looking at the same problem that you just mentioned. There's so much empty boxes, uh, so many empty boxes, so many real estate you know retail environments that really need 
community to come back to it, you know? So it's not just about the shopping, it's about what else drives people to a location. Before, it used to be the movie theaters, uh, and we see people kind of moving away from that a little bit, and then it, you know, now it's going back to you know, restaurants, breweries, gyms, you know, the, the experience that we're building. You know, anything to get people back into the community is really the, the power that we think will drive the next retail wave, you know, the experiential retail wave as, as it's being done. The missing piece right now that will make it explode is a wearable that doesn't make you look goofy. You know, right now what exists are things that you're asking someone to put a device on their face and there's a lot of resistance, understandably so. I think that people are becoming aware of how, how you can take something that is uh, static and make it very dynamic. And I think it has application in all kinds of fields, but particularly with our work with employee training into these new collar jobs, um, it can, can really pivot the, the perception of how, um, for example, a manufacturing job is dirty and boring and really have someone see how fun it is to work with these tools. You'll soon see jobs of the future leveraging virtual space that adopt influence from gaming, design, storytelling, deep analytics, and online commerce. We'll see many new jobs as a result. Roles like VR and AR journey builders, personal memory curators, haptic interface programmers, and virtual immersion counselors will take flight. While all of this sounds great, privacy is a key concern. And what if we create a world where we can't tell the difference between reality and non-reality? Or imagine a virtual world that you never want to leave. The Japanese have a subculture that they call hikikomori, which roughly translates into English as pulling inward. Like whiskey, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, and so humans will need detox from virtual space, like digital Sabbaths that can give our addled brains a break. And given this intensely visual medium, as the saying goes, the eyeballs are the windows into the soul. So ethical guardrails are necessary, proper, and essential concerns that are everyone's responsibility. Forget the hype. The dawn of virtual space is something that will become very, very big. If you think glimmers like Pokemon Go or even Second Life were a joke, remember, people thought the same thing about cloud computing 20 years ago. Indeed, the most surprising possibility about Second Life may be that it offered us an electrifying exemplar of virtual space, a place of the future that's already on the horizon today.